So I don't review a lot of gaming phones on this channel because I'll be quite honest with you. I think most of them look hideous. And on top of that, I feel like for the price you're paying, most normal phones will get you 99% of the job done. But this phone was interesting. The ROG Phone 8 Pro caught my attention because it had all the latest specs, some like crazy specs that most normal phones don't have, but most importantly, it didn't look tacky. Like it looks like a normal phone, but you can customize it, fine tune it to look like a gaming phone if you really want to. The one thing that kind of makes it look like a gaming phone right off the bat is obviously the Anime Matrix display on the back. There's 341 mini LEDs inside of here. You can enable or disable this, but it's kind of neat because it gives you different information and you get to select the type of information it shows. Right now it's, you know, showing ROG branding, the time. It might show you the battery life if you have it plugged into a charger. You can choose a bunch of different things. But it's also very subtle. Like if you look at the top left hand corner, it says Republic of Gamers, it says Dare to Win, GLHF, which means good luck, have fun. And then of course, established in 2006. So there is gaming branding on the device, but it's not in your face. And I think that's very special. Now the camera obviously sticks out of the back quite a bit. Like, you know, this is a phone that's obviously gonna wobble on the table. Most phones do these days because of the crazy camera bumps they're using, but it just, it's a normal phone. And that's what I appreciate about it. Now this is a big device. So like if you don't like big smartphones, this is the phone obviously not for you. Like you're talking about a 6.78 inch display, which is quite large, but it's rounded off on the edges. It's square in the front. So you have a flat surface. I do find it a bit slippery. Like they do include a case that lets you show certain things like this, but even with that case on, it still feels kind of slippery. You might want to go out there and buy a third party case if you want like no slippage at all. The back is kind of matte, so it feels good. It's a little frosted rather, so you don't see any fingerprints, which is great, especially considering that this has a black color. But there's lots of ports on this. So 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is great to see. I know it's more prominent on gaming phones, but I would love to see that on all phones. Speaker on the bottom, you have your SIM card slot, which obviously is a dual SIM tray. You have a type C port, which supports OTG. And then on the side, you have your volume rocker, power button. And then on the left-hand side, you have another type C port, which actually just does display 1.4 out, which is pretty impressive. Obviously there's dual speakers on this and the speakers on this phone sound pretty good. Not the best, but really good for a gaming phone. Now the phone does support IP68, so if you happen to accidentally drop it in water, it's not gonna fry on you. But look, this display is very, very unique. Like it is a full HD plus display. It's not QHD, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's fine. You know, like I didn't look at this and be like, wow, I wish it was QHD. Everything looked great on it. And the fact that it's OLED and it can go up to 2,500 nits of peak brightness, which is crazy. Like this is a bright display. But there is a little bit of a catch here, okay? If you want LTPO to kick in, so dynamically ramp up, you have to leave it on 120 hertz. It only works between one and 120 hertz. If you wanna take advantage of the 165 hertz refresh rate, you throw it on X mode, which is basically the phone's gaming mode, and you kind of go out of that LTPO range and you're like stuck on 165 hertz, which is fine for gaming, but if you leave it on all day, it's obviously going to use a little bit more battery life. The good news though is even if you leave it on 165 hertz, the battery life on this phone is so good that it honestly doesn't matter. Now, because this is a gaming phone, you do have some of ASUS's customized software. Every time their Armory Crate app loads up, you have to deal with this little intro, but it's fine. But you have a bunch of options on the bottom. So you have your game library and you have different profiles for it. So like you can set the air triggers on the top, for example, for each profile. You can go to the console section over here and then it gives you a little bit more information about your phone. So it will tell you like how hot it is right now. It will tell you how much space you have free, same with memory. And then on the bottom over here, you have different options. You can put on X mode, which is like the best performance for the phone. Dynamic will switch back and forth based on what you're doing. And then ultra durable will obviously give you the best battery life. Yes, it's playing music every time you open the app. These are little things I don't wanna see. I just want this to like be quiet when I'm using it. And if you scroll all the way down, you have the option to enable or disable the anime vision. And these are all the different settings over here that you can basically choose from if you wanna keep it on. So you have music, incoming call, notification, charging, screen off, the list goes on. Now there are air triggers on this phone. So these two 
little spots up here where it says ROG, you can use to tap, like they're touch sensitive. So you have extra buttons that you can use instead of pressing the screen, which is very handy if you game. Plus it comes with this little cooling device that attaches to the type C port on the back. So all you have to do is push this little button over here, this expands, and then you can place it in the type C port, put it on. And then as soon as it's on, basically what happens is the phone detects it and the cooler is connected and all of a sudden it lights up with a little bit of RGB. I don't know if you guys can see it and the fan kicks on. This is how loud it is right now. Actually, you can't even hear it because of the software. But anyways, the fan kicks on and then you have two buttons on the back of it that are also triggers that you can use in the games you play. Now, I do wanna talk about heat management because usually the message with gaming phones is that you get the best performance and the best cooling. Now look, the performance on this is absolutely insane. I tested it against a couple of other phones that I have in the studio that use Snapdragon HN3 processors. This one obviously had the best performance, but it gets hot. And I mean, really hot. Like if you use it on X gaming mode, this thing is gonna heat up to the point where it feels hot to the touch. And this was obviously with a stress test. Like if you're just doing normal everyday gaming, it's not gonna get that hot. But I tested a bunch of different devices using 3D Mark wildlife stress test and this got the hottest. Now, if I put the cooling mechanism on, it felt way better. Like it actually brought the temps down. The performance was actually a little bit faster when this thing is connected to the back. But ASUS is allowing this phone to be pushed to its full potential where other devices will kind of throttle just to keep the temperatures down so that it's always comfortable to hold. But the gaming experience on this is fantastic. I didn't have any drop frames. It doesn't matter what game I played. Everything felt nice and smooth. It was so great to have extra triggers and buttons to press so that I didn't have to constantly touch all the buttons on the screen. It just felt more console-like rather than like, you know, your typical smartphone. But yeah, the performance on this is really, really good. Doesn't matter what game you play. I'd also like to say that the battery life, 5,500 milliamp hours is so good. Like I was walking around Vegas all day and I, at the end of the day, I had 41% battery life left and I had six hours of screen on time, which is nuts. Like this thing is pushing 10 hours of screen on time if I was to drain this to zero. Like this is a phone you can easily get two days with. Now it does support 65 watt wire charging or 30 watts if you're in India, plus it also has 15 watt wireless charging. I was surprised it was gonna have wireless charging. Because of the display on the back, I didn't think that would be a feature, but it actually made it onto the phone. Now the camera is pretty good, you know, like they didn't crap out on the camera, like this is a good camera. 50 megapixel wide lens, you have a 32 megapixel telephoto lens, and then you have a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but it does take good pictures. It's not gonna beat out a Galaxy S23 Ultra or an iPhone 15 Pro, but for a gaming phone, this is definitely one of the better cameras out there. Even the front camera has been bumped up compared to the previous model. It's now 32 megapixels, so you do get some good selfie shots with this. Probably sort of important if you're gaming on your phone and let's say you're streaming off your device, you'll have a better image compared to older ROG phones, so that's good to see. Now, I do wanna talk about the software experience because right now, I have it on, you know, like a normal mode, right? I took away all the gaming stuff to make it look like a typical smartphone, but there is an ASUS ROG theme that you can utilize to make the phone look more like a gaming phone. Personally, I don't like it, but if that's your thing, you can totally do that. Also, there's a lot of little shings and bings every time you open something up just to make it feel a bit different than your normal smartphone. Again, these are things you can completely customize and get rid of it, but the software experience is great. Like everything is buttery smooth. Like it doesn't matter what I do. Uh, all the menus look very stock-like, you know, it has a little bit of a Seuss theming, but it's not overbearing. Like even when I go into the settings menu, it's it's very simple. It's very Android-like or Android 14-like. So you're gonna feel right at home no matter what phone you're coming from. The crazy thing is this device has 24 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now this specific one costs $14.99, which I think is absolutely crazy but there is a slightly cheaper model that comes with a little bit less RAM, I think 16 and also a 512 gigabytes of storage, like 24 gigabytes of RAM. Like that's more than most laptops these days, like most productivity based laptops and you have it in a phone. 
I don't really foresee a situation where you need 24 gigabytes of RAM unless you're planning to keep this thing for the next 45 years. Now, before I wrap this up, I should also mention the fingerprint scanner. It is nice and quick, like there's no issues there. Obviously you get a little animation to go along with the theming, but the big question is, should you buy the RG Phone 8 Pro? Well, I think it's for a very specific niche. Like you have to love playing games on your phone. Like you have to be very competitive. It must be something you do a lot because to pay a premium for a device like this just doesn't make a lot of sense for most normal people. Unless you just really want a headphone jack, then I totally get that. But yeah, like, I love the fact that Asus created a device that not only looks like a normal phone, but you get all the best features of a phone that's meant for gaming. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.